Milfoil grows very quickly under the right circumstance. In 2011, over five short years, the plant had gone from about 200 to 300 square feet to a mat in the middle of Shepherd Bay. Past integrated approaches using weevil have taken a long time. As you've seen over the years, it has not been able to keep up with the infestation of Eurasian or milfoil. Herbicides do act relatively quickly. Not that they're going to be a shock to the ecosystem, but you're going to see the control efforts. And being the systemic, you're going to see long-term control. Mechanical harvesting, although in some situations is appropriate, it's short-term, very short-term. You're going to definitely see the regrowth of, of your Eurasian water milfoil. What happens if you try to treat your milfoil in the riparian area yourself? There's a high probability you're not going to get an effective dose there and plants that get a sublethal dose are going to start growing again. They're going to become more resistant to this chemical. In the end, it's going to cost more to effectively treat it, or you may lose the efficiency of that chemical altogether. In the aquatic industry, there are a variety of requirements. Not only do we have to work according to the EPA label for all the herbicides used, we need to have state registration with the Department of Ag and the Department of Environmental Quality. All of the applicators have to take certification exams and have a testing procedure through our company to ensure that we're providing these services efficiently and safely to the public and to the environment. The safety of these products are proven with the EPA registration, approval through the Department of Ag and the DEQ. If we were to think when we go out and do our treatments on a daily basis, we notify you with a sign in addition to other measures that take place prior to this. But at that time when the sign goes up, and there's many kids that can't read those posting signs. There's dogs, deer, wildlife, warm-blooded mammals. We are the same as these warm-blooded mammals. If there were going to be any adverse effects that would take place with the wildlife, we would never, ever be able to use these products in the environment. Over the 20 plus years of using herbicides, we have never seen any adverse impacts to wildlife, to someone's dog, to a young child. The restrictions that are going to be posted are going to be a one-day swimming restriction. And that's not as much as a safety precaution or even a label requirement, but a state requirement on our permits to allow us to do our job so people aren't in our ways swimming while we're trying to apply the herbicides, boating activities. Now, it's okay for people to boat through the areas that are treated. It's okay for people to fish in the areas that we're treating. There are no fishing restrictions. There are no fishing consumption restrictions of the product that we're using. But once again, if there were to be adverse impacts by dogs and little kids going into the waters, which they do all the time after treatment, we'd never be able to do these types of things. Renovate OTF is one of the most widely used herbicides for Eurasian water milk oil control in the state of Michigan. As you can see on this map, a variety of lakes in the lower peninsula of Michigan are already using this product and have been using it for many years successfully. As an example, Houghton Lake, very successful program in incorporating the use of Renovate OTF. Torch Lake, Six Mile Lake, on the shoreline of Lake Michigan, Arcadia Lake, Cordage Lake, Pentwater, Upper Silver, Stony, Spring Lake. We can go all the way over to Lake Huron, Lake Van Enten. In Central Michigan, a variety of them, Lake Mitchell, Lake Cadillac, Masaki Lake, Rose Lake, just to name a few of these larger water bodies that many of you probably heard about. It's one of the most common products, all these yellow pinpoints on this map show lakes that have used Renovate in the past with no adverse effects and successful results. Used correctly, these products are safe and they can benefit your environment. We look forward to working with your group. In the next few weeks, there's going to be many opportunities for us to converse. Hopefully there's going to be an open forum public meeting coming up here also. A wonderful opportunity for all of us to be constructive, work together and implement a program an integrator program in the best interest of the Lation Islands. For more information, be sure to attend the Lation Community Forum on May 23rd. Also monitor the Lation Watershed Council's website at lationowatershed.org. Check out the Pure Water blog site as well at lcipurewater.blogspot.com. Finally, browse the other links provided here for more information. Working together, we can implement the best solutions for milfoil management in the Lachino Islands.